Good afternoon and welcome to New Talk. It's the opposite of Old Talk, right here on Synergy TV, Real TV. And we're here to talk about something that I think is still very much on the public consciousness. It's revenge porn. This has only been about three weeks after the Lendl Simmons ruling in favor of Therese Ho in the case where he had shared intimate images of her from social media to not only her significant other, but a couple of his own friends. Uh, that case has recently been concluded in favor of Therese Ho, and yet still, there's still some confusion about whether or not that ruling was just, and how do we deal with circumstances much like this one in Trinidad and Tobago going forward, especially considering not too long after that, we have another case of a young lady simply sending her phone to be repaired at a local cell phone repair shop, only to discover that one of the em employees, sorry, decides to share her own images without her consent on social media. How do we deal with these issues? And I'm here to talk with some gender studies students at the University of the West Indies. Uh, and let me introduce them right away. We have political science student and student socialist conference member, Reagan Gibbings. She's only 18 years old, here to talk about uh, this very important social justice issue. Here with her is Joanna Ray Rez, who's a geography student and also a member of the Student Socialist Conference and lecturer at the Institute of Gender and Development Studies and at the Geography Department of the University of the West Indies, Mr. Levi Gaiman. Good afternoon, everybody. Hi. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and ask the very first question. This issue is just as much a feminist issue as it is a justice issue in Trinidad and Tobago. So we have one political scientist, that's fine. But how many of us here identify themselves as feminists and how do you think that affects this conversation? Well, I'm a feminist. I, feminist. <laughs> <laughs> and I think specifically, like, um, a feminist is a person who sees uh, that there are gender inequalities in the world and we aim to do better in that. So, I, feminist, yeah. Okay, so I am an advocate for feminist rights and I do support the views that, you know, equality should be on a level playing field for both men and women. Now, I wouldn't solely say that I am a feminist with regards to the fact that I don't know what feminism solely entails, but I do advocate for rights concerning women. OK, fantastic. And Levi? <laughs> yeah, so for myself, it's, um, it's difficult sometimes to claim a label unto itself. But having said that, uh, in terms of feminism, I try to be a feminist. I hope to be a feminist. It's not really up to me to decide whether I'm a feminist or not, um, but I'm constantly in an everyday process of trying to become a feminist. I think they have a quite sophisticated perspective on power, gender, even issues of race, class, sexuality. Um, so in terms of identifying as a feminist, uh, I hope that I am. Uh, and then once again, qualifying that with saying, I'm not necessarily the one in charge of it. Um, um, but I couldn't be more supportive a feminist, and like I said, um, hopefully that label um, will be bestowed upon me someday. Okay, <laughs> bestowed upon you, that's interesting. So, as for, uh, in so much as revenge porn is a, a feminist issue, uh, what, what, what has been um, the response around revenge porn on a global perspective from the feminist movement? Like how, how do folks identify those things? Right? How, in, in the sense of how do we define revenge porn? What is the benchmark? What's the yardstick to use? Uh, okay, so the revenge porn, I think there's been a, a very strong uh, vitriolic reaction for it, uh, against it. I think that's necessary. Um, definitions of what revenge porn constitutes um, is varied and wide ranging. Um, I think the important thing to, to sort of consider or place in the foreground in terms of what constitutes revenge porn um, is consent as well as exposure. Um, and so when people share um, photos of themselves, when they expose themselves in particular ways, um, if they don't consent to that being released publicly, um, then I think those constitute acts of revenge porn. Um, and I think there's some significant deep-seated issues of power and control 
involved in that and instances of revenge porn globally mm -hmm. um, are impacting women much more than they are men. So it's not to sort of just say that this is only happening to women, um, but the percentages and the instances of revenge porn, um, and then even in some uh, circles as well as conversations, it's called cyber rape, um, which is a very in intense way to frame it. Um, it has to do with consent as well as power relations and control and domination. Um, and underlying those things um, are deep-seated issues of anger um, as well as entitlement. Um, so sort of the perceived um, anger uh, and sense of rejection that people face because they're no longer entitled to a woman's body oftentimes causes them to react in a very particular way, sometimes by exposing women and even to sometimes men to things that they haven't consented to. Okay. And so, uh, Johanna, that's, that's a fantastic uh, that's definition. That really sums it up. Sums but with that in up. mind, uh, this, the, the Lando Simmons ruling, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you really simply, do you agree with it? Well, I think, I, I feel like I think Therese, who oh, in bringing it, to, in taking action against it, she, I agree with her for 100%. Mm -hmm. So that was good. But I feel like the ruling was not exactly, it did not fit specifically the crime that was committed against her in that um, she, the, the ramifications for her are more like, would affect her in the long term yeah. more like after this case. So a simple thing like writing a check and then handing her the money, like that's not, it doesn't necessarily make things better for her. Because when you search to read who, like you're gonna come up, this case is gonna come up. But when you search Lando Simmons, it'll be cricket, cricket, cricket. I don't know, you might see it somewhere. You know, right. so it would affect her differently and I don't think necessarily that simply giving her a sum of money in one thing, it would, you know, would really help the yep. situation. Okay, but then what is, what is the real, what, is, what should the penalty be for these kind of circumstances? I mean, the court is kind of, for some people, the court is only really justified in cases such as this. It's not a criminal charge in uh, that Lendl Simmons did not commit a murder, he didn't steal from somebody. Well, what, what could the penalty be? We can't put him in jail, can we? Oh, no, I, I don't think that that would be just either, put him in jail. However, like more, I think a, a more um, fitting response, so like for instance, like us talking about this now, every time her name is mentioned in this context, she should be given immediately a sum of money, something <laughs> like that. I think would make more That's sense if we want to use money as right. like, you know. That she gets that royalties for the mention of money. Yeah, because I feel like, would we be talking about her? Would we be um, making fun of her name? Or, you know, things like that if right. this case did not happen. You know, she wouldn't be a thing if, you know. Right. Okay. So I feel like... So there's another, so there's an, another name that's popping up in, in the Trinbagonian consciousness in much the same way, that of uh, uh, Nikisha Cornwall. Oh, yeah. That's the young lady who sent her phone to be repaired uh, at Bad Robot, only to find one of the employees shared her images without her knowledge. Yeah. Um, and it happened before with Anya Young Chief. Right, and it happened with Anya Young Yeah. It's just it's been a thing that has been happening. It's, it, right, and it's been happening. Time. And it, it, what, what's, what's important to me is, while I think this is a way that men have behaved uh, almost historically, right? With social media, the way that we do that has changed mm -hmm. drastically. And I, I want, I'm wondering if anybody has any thoughts on that. How has social media changed the game as far as women's privacy and consent are negotiated? Has it gotten, is it, is it still, because some would say that it's easier now for women to negotiate consent. After all, it is the reads who sent the photos. That's got to mean something. That's what some people say. Yeah. Mm, no. 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 And he sent she she sent those photos or whatever, so she allowed him to see her body in that way, mm -hmm. but just him. Right. You know. So I don't necessarily think her sending me photos means that she gave that he has the right to share it with others. It's obviously like an intimate relationship, and I feel like that it's it's. And I, I do agree that this has been a thing, like sharing um, intimate information with each other, with your friends for like a long time, but in, in a more private way. So it, hasn't, so it has changed over time because now we have social media or whatever. But I know that it's still wrong. It's wrong. Okay. Reagan, what do you think? Okay, so um, 
persons may say if you don't want your nudes to be exposed, don't stand it in the first place. Yeah. And though that might be a precaution to heed for future reference and all of that, I believe it was sent because you know you want to share that moment with your partner and obviously no female is going to sit and say, okay, well, please, please do put my nudes on social media with the most longest, vindictive and humiliating caption ever. Of course not. You know, so it is obvious that these photos were to remain private and I think that it should be constituted as a crime that men share these photos on social media and for all the persons who they post and they repost and they leave these comments should also also be punished. Okay. How then do we deal, and I'm, I'm going to share a, a really interesting story. Um, a local comedian had once shared, this was like late last year, shared a story of an, an encounter that she had with a homeless person in Port of Spain uh, where the individual was naked, right? She took photos of that individual. Of course, it was very low light, so it's, 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 up for, it's up for grabs what people saw and didn't see. But she did take photos of uh, a citizen of Trinidad and Tobago, homeless as he was, um, and posted that on social media of this person um, um, in, his, in, in his birthday suit, for lack of a better term. Uh, these cases traditionally involve women, right? Like, Nikita, like Nikisha Cornwall and Therese Ho and Anya Yangchi. How then do we deal with it when the gender roles are flipped? Yeah? Do you think the punishments are still the same? And, and to add to that, do you think that individuals' um, status, their class, affect how they, how they are dealt with in these kind of uh, cases as well? Like, how does a homeless person defend himself? It, it's true. I feel like in that situation, um, that, that is bad mm -hmm. because you know, he, it, it's not like there was consent. So that situation is the same thing in effect. So she should be dealt with in a similar way. However, what is, if he is, who's going to bring the case up? Like who's yeah. going to stand up right. for them? And I, I feel like, yes, that is an issue. That's something that we have to iron out and we have to deal with in cases like this. Any ideas so how we would iron it out? Well, I, I think um, similarly, like that case with the, um, girl who was like um, domestically abused in public and there was a right. video of her and she did not press charges. Yeah. I feel like in uh, the state could probably represent in those people could advocate on their behalf in a situation like that. Okay. Yeah, you know? So yeah. Where they can't where, or won't mm -hmm. advocate for themselves and defend themselves in that way. Okay. So uh, Levi, I want to I wanna put you on the spot here. You're not from around here. Right? You're actually from Kansas, oh, and you <laughs> yeah, and, and you're lecturing at um, you're lecturing at the University of the West Indies for a short period of time. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the do you think that there's a difference between revenge porn in Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean and revenge porn in the U.S.? Um, well, I'm by no means an, means an expert on revenge porn. I don't think in any in either context. But um, the things that I've seen come up in terms of revenge porn. Um, um, while they may ma manifest themselves slightly different and there may be um, particular situated um, languages and way things are discussed, um, I think the underlying issue um, at hand in both the United States and Canada, uh, as well as other countries, as well as Trinidad and Tobago, um, I think the one thing that's sort of at the foundation of this all um, are problematic notions of uh, masculinity um, and sort of deep-seated, ingrained, entrenched notions um, of what manhood is, of what men sort of are entitled to, as well as perceptions um, as to what women um, are supposed to be in society. And oftentimes, it, like in the United States, as well as Trinidad and Tobago, um, there is um, instances, and I think it's quite pervasive, of what's, you know, it's just the male objectifying gaze. And so the, basically the way um, that women's bodies are looked at, right? Um, and they're looked at in particular ways, not in all instances, um, but I think the underlying issues are one, masculinity, and then also two, heterosexuality. And so we, it, in order to sort of have a conversation about revenge porn, um, the vast majority of cases of revenge porn are also taking place between heterosexual couples. Um, so what does that mean in terms of 
revenge porn? Is heterosexuality a problem? Um, as well as notions of manhood uh, and masculinity. Um, so very much differences in terms of particularities, but there's also an underlying foundation that I think is very similar. Okay, cool. And we're going to talk about more of that in just a bit. We're talking gender, sexuality, justice, revenge porn. You're watching New Talk. It's the opposite of World Talk. You will be back right after this. <laughs> 